as a developer, you end up writing tons and tons of Boolean tests. Is this true? Is this false? Are the combination of these two things both true, or is one true and one false, etc., etc.? So let's take a look at some of the syntax elements that we're going to use in C Sharp to do things like making decisions. Now I'm using the professional edition of Visual Studio for this, but we could just as well use a text editor and just simply a compiler. Uh, the syntax, the logic, everything that I'm going to show you here in this set of videos is going to work on any edition, express, professional, it's going to all be the same. We're just really talking about syntax elements, not features in this set of videos. So let me just do this. I'm going to create a new C Sharp project. And this project is going to just be a console application. And uh, it's really all that we're going to need uh, to include uh, to do our discussion here. All right, let's do the basic if test in C Sharp. Right? So we use the if statement in C Sharp to make our decisions for us. And I think uh, most people would be familiar with the concept, so I don't think I need to go too deep. But let's do if. Now if, open your parentheses, they are required here. So now once you say if, you open the parentheses, now you write your Boolean test. So I, if one is less than two, close your parentheses. Now if one is less than two, this must evaluate to true or false. It's a Boolean expression. Now hit enter and the next line is what you want to do. So console.writeLine all is right with the world. Close it out, terminate the statement. And I really could be done at this point. So I could come up here and we could say we want to start debugging, hit F5, hit this little green arrow, whatever we wish to do. Oh, you know what? I actually want to read line so we can see that. Uh, what the if statement is going to do here is if this evaluates to true, it executes the next line only. If it's not evaluating to true, I don't have an else, so it's not going to do this. So watch. One is less than true than two, so it wrote out all is right with the world. Console.readline, in case you don't know what that does, it's waiting for me to hit the enter key right now. Now, if we change this, so if we said one greater than two, now it's just simply waiting for me to hit the enter key. It's not writing out console.writeLine. The little message here says that this is unreachable code. Okay, fine. So it waits for me to hit the enter. I hit the enter. Now we could come over here and add an else. So else console, oops, that right line. Uh, the world is broken. <laughs> Terminate our statement. Now one's not greater than two, so the world is broken, and it shows us. Now you could uh, also have uh, additional statements here. So I could come down and say else if uh, 3 is less than 4. Console.writeLine 3 is less than 4. So notice that if you're coming from VB or looking at some of the syntax, there's no else if. There's no single word else if. That is not a keyword. If I try to build that, I'm going to get a build error. You actually have to separate this out to the extra x, the else if. Okay, so let's look at what actually occurs here. This is the concept of fall through when we start talking about branching and how if statements work. It does the first test. If it's not successful, or if it's not true, then it goes and tests the next expression. If it's not true, it falls all the way through. Okay, sorry. I don't have edit and continue. Okay, so it falls through. Okay, get out of my way. You go. Fall through. That's what this means. You have fallen through. This was not true. This was not true, and so you fell through all the way to the else here. Okay. 
Now, if I want to do multiple statements, so maybe we want to write another line, console.write line. Uh, this is the second line. And let's change this to one less than two here. This is actually going to now generate a syntax error. And you see the underscore, uh, the little underlines under else and if. If you want to, let's say no, and I don't want you showing up every time. If you want to have multiple expressions or statements or executables, you have to ensconce them in the brackets. Okay. Now this works together. So a single line of code does not need brackets. Right? So if you just have a single line of executable, you don't have to write it in brackets. But if you have more than one line, and now you're grouping these statements together, you have to put them inside of the brackets. So now 1 is less than true, 2. This is our true. So we execute. You can see it did write both lines. So you'll have to put those in the brackets. Uh, let's talk about... Uh, I'm going to delete this here. So let's now say uh, we've got a string. And it's a message. And let's talk about assignment of this string based on conditional values. So we could uh, do this. This is an uninitialized string. Or we could set it to a default value. We could initialize this. And then we could write an if statement. If 1 is less than 2 message equals all is right, else message equals all is wrong, console.write line, message. Run this, all is right. But what we can actually do is instead of having, what, five lines of code, we could do this in a single line of code in C sharp. So let's do this. Let's change this. Don't need the default value. What we can do is we don't even have to use the if operator here. We can say one less than two question mark. So when you include the question mark after a Boolean test, then the next thing is what happens when it's true. All is right colon all is wrong. Terminate your statement. And I no longer need the if statement down here because now I've done this all in a single line. So this is going to work the exact same way we get all is right. Now this works we have over here all is right all is wrong. Now it's telling me this is unreachable code because this is guaranteed to be a boolean every time. It's not a, a runtime setting here. right? But you have to have a Boolean expression on this side. Use your question mark. And then you say, this is the value that gets assigned on true. And then this is the value that gets assigned on false. Right. So very shortcut uh, way to do this. Let me pull that back. Which to you, let's say, uh, let's just do that so we don't get message. Which way? If you are a developer and you're looking at somebody else's code, which way would you prefer to see this? I would definitely prefer this technique down here. That is uh, more concise. It's easier for me to read. Uh, I definitely prefer that smaller bit of code. And it's funny, I just got through recording the VB series on this for LearnVBProgramming.com. And in VB, we have the IF statement. And it has similar functionality we could do in VB, but I don't prefer the VB version. I would prefer in VB to write it out longhand, but in C Sharp, I actually like the shorthand a little better. Uh, I, I don't know why. <laughs> I, don't, I don't necessarily have a reason, but that's the one that I would prefer uh, to use, and it's the one that I use in my code here.